Hello Clovis, California. My name's Julian Downward. You already knew that, didn't you? Gary, great pleasure to be talking with you today. The awesome Rebecca Elloway is behind the camera today. I'll show you her hand saying hello. Yeah, she's amazing. Um, she's the one who did your write-ups on the website, as you already know. I told you that, I think. Um, Want to quickly just go through the, the whole sort of principle of drums on demand today. I'm specifically focusing on drums on demand because that's the best sort of drum loop stuff that I've seen in a long time. But um, really the same principles apply to if you're going to be using acid, the, the loops that come with acid, um, or if you get you know loops packs from anywhere else. But the, there's a couple of really good things about drums on demand, which is why I'd advise you um, you know to think about purchasing them. On the whole, um, you pay somewhere around about anything from $25 up to sort of $70 for, for a pack um, from Drums On Demand. Uh, you can order hard copies of it, but you can also just download it directly. It's a bit more expensive in hard copy, I think, only, but only by about $1.50, something like that. Um, but I just want to show you how it sort of all uh, opens up and whatever. But um, I will say, first of all, once you download it, then they sort of, there's quite a strange sort of um, way that you have to then go and find your find your loops, find what you've actually downloaded. They kind of give you a download center and you've got just a couple of days to actually download them. Once you've downloaded them, you can only do that once uh, and you have to sort of back them up to your hard drive, your, an external hard drive or even a big memory, memory stick, something like that. Um, so make sure you do that when you download it because you've only got to get a virus or a crash and then you lose your investment. You can't go back and say, hey, I've paid for these. Uh, because they won't keep them for you. Um, but then once you get them in there, then um, drop them into the folder structure that you want. Um, I'll quickly take you through how I set mine up. Um, Becky, if you'll just follow my finger approximately. Um, I've actually called this file Gary's DOD Demo, which stands for Drums On Demand Demo, and I've named it after you. Of course, Stephen, if you're listening, don't take offense. All right. Anyway, Drums On Demand. Um, what I do is I come into my Explorer window down here in uh, Acid. If it's not expanded, then just drag it up like that. Uh, and in this case, I'm going to my files hard drive, and then I've got all of my sample stuff, loops and everything else is all down here, um, which in this case is drums, uh, drums on demand loops. I open that up, and I bought, um, I bought one pack, uh, and it comes with two, two version one and a version two release. So for one pack that I think cost me... Thirty dollars, thirty-five dollars. Uh, you can see these folders that it breaks uh, that it breaks down into. So here we have a 068 BPM clean and open. Then we have uh, 72 BPM, 76.5 BPM. So obviously you've got all these different speeds in uh, release one, and then you have release two, which has goes from uh, 112 BPM up to 100 and, uh, yeah, 165 BPM and then has some generic single hits which is things like just single snares, toms, kicks and, and, and cymbals and stuff like that. So you get a lot for your money. Um, you may find them quite limiting because of course they're in different styles of drumming but effectively they're amazing. Now uh, before I go any further if you're thinking to yourself I really don't know if I want to go ahead with using software drums. First of all they're not samples, they're, they're, um, they're actually real drummers recording real drum kits in real studios, very expensive studios. Um, if it's any advert for you at all, the guy who just did the music score for Iron Man 2 exclusively, exclusively used drums on demand for all the music for the film. And he said, once again, I could just reach in there, find exactly what I wanted and have the perfect sound without any mucking around, no studio time, no expensive session musicians, nothing like that. Um, speaking of expensive session musicians and uh, people messing around, Dan Morgan's in the house. Zoom back, Bex. You might not get his head in. He's brought me a coffee. Check this out. This is what Hello. we pay him for. Hello, Mr. Kennedy. I'd have brought you a coffee as well if I'd you know, known you were here. But uh, You couldn't do uh, that, though. You couldn't and, do that, though, I'll Dan. try and pour it down the, the lens for you. You couldn't, you couldn't do that, mate. <laughs> they, they don't, you can't put coffee across the internet. Oh, can you not just send it as an attachment? No, you can't do it, mate. One day, maybe, one day. Maybe they'll invent it. I'll tell you you'll invent it, the Americans. Right. God bless America. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I nearly did the whole of this presentation in an American accent because I think I'd get more hits on YouTube. But anyway. Um, YouTube. So anyway, here we go. Yeah, YouTube, was it? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Gary. Um, uh, right, so once we've opened up, uh, in this case, I'm going to do a quick demo with um, 072 BPM, and it's called Fluid. As soon as I open up the folder, then it, in my Explorer window here, which you've probably already found with uh, Acid, 
it straight away gives me all the different instruments uh, that are in that pack. So, and I just need to click once on it to get a preview, and there's my preview now. Click on another one, you get another one. Okay, now what you'll see, again, follow my finger if you would, Bex. Um, what you'll see here is the labeling of the, of the files is really important because what you basically have with Drums On Demand that I've never seen with any other uh, software package or loops package is, we'll start right at the top, you've got chorus, ride, and then you've got verse. So those are your basic chorus and verse uh, patterns. So the verse one is that. And that would, that would be it for, for however many bars you get. Here's the chorus, it has a ride included. Okay, but now uh, what you have on top of that, you have a chorus ride alternate. So it's almost exactly the same, but it's just got some small changes in the pattern, which is all important for recording, as you know, the simpler really that every instrument is, the better it ends up sounding, especially that goes for drums. Studio drummers very rarely make anything more complicated than it needs to be. So they'll have a small alteration in the mix there. You can hear the drop snare there. To... Okay, and then, um, there's, then there's a chorus with a ride, but it starts with a crash, so you don't have to put a crash in separately. So you would just drop that in just for one bar or something. Then we have a different symbol that's more of a, almost just a bit harsher. It's another alternate of it. Chorus ride crash two. And then we have chorus ride with a fill. We have chorus ride with a fill number two. Chorus ride with a fill number three. Anyway, you get the message. We also get though here, intros, it, different uh, intros that are just very basic like this one and then you're in, or there's intro with a crash or there's intro with a fill intro with a fill too okay and then you've also got, in, as well as chorus uh, chorus, um, what do you call it, alternates, you've also got verse alternates and um, so you've got like, what is it, four different alternate patterns for the verse which you might want to just use for the second verse or split a verse into into having an alternate for the second half of the verse whatever just for expression uh, in this case you've got also a good loop here which is called verse build uh, and you've got a verse with a crash at the very beginning of it there verse with fills there's a short one fill number two might be a little bit different more of a snare roll and so on. So now I'll just quickly show you then what you need to do then to start to build this. It's very simple. You either just click on the instrument that you want. So if we're starting with an intro, let's say, double click on it, it'll open a it'll open a track. If you follow my finger back, you open a track there called intro. Then if I've got the pencil uh, tool selected, which is up there, then I just drag that open like that. And we take a listen to it by soloing that track. Put my cursor there, hit space, and there it is. Okay, and then, so let's say I've, I've done my intro and I want to go straight to a verse, double click verse, drag that as well, and we'll go from the intro, I'll just open that up a bit to see that it's aligned, very important that you align it, if you want to know specifically, or very accurately rather, how well aligned it is, just get one of these little V's which shows the beginning and the end of the actual loop, get the other one underneath it and drag it backwards, and here we have an intro running into the verse.